The text I'll read aloud is from the book Lives of the Musicians, Good Times, Bad Times, and What the Neighbors Thought, written by Kathleen Kroll. The Czech's Cotton Underwear of Johannes Brahms, born in Hamburg, Germany, 1833, died in Vienna, Austria, 1897. German composer who wrote masterpieces in almost every form except opera, most famous for his four symphonies and lush piano music. Johannes Brahms did things other people might have wished they could do. He fell asleep once when composer Franz Liszt was playing piano for him. He dressed strictly for comfort, and he left his clothes on the floor when he went to bed. He liked merry-go-rounds and circus sideshows. Not until he was almost 30 did he stop playing with ten soldiers. Brahms had not always been able to do what he wanted. He grew up in the slums of Hamburg, surrounded by crime and disease. His father, who was 17 years younger than his mother, was a bass player who worked in bars. At an early age, Brahms helped support his family by playing dance music in waterfront bars. He kept a book propped up on the piano so he could read while he played, and when he got sleepy, bartenders plied him with drinks to keep him awake. By the time he was 15, he was making a living through music. He left Hamburg to travel as an accompanist to famous Hungarian violinist, carrying his knapsack, works of his own. Brahms was handsome when he was young, slender with long, straw blonde hair, and he had a high voice that didn't change until he was 24. The foundation of his life was his friendship with Clara Schumann, who was 14 years older than he was. She advised him on matters large, she got jobs for him, and small, which slippers to take when he visited Hamburg. On things musical, she gave him piano lessons, and unmusical, how to invest his money. For a while, he simply sent all of it to her. She did everything she could possibly do to help his career, and he wrote most of his music with her in mind. He also gave two years of his life to helping Schumann and her children with housekeeping, childcare, rearranging her library of books and music. Brahms had a limited education, but he was a walking encyclopedia. They wrote hundreds of letters to each other, some of which they later destroyed. Brahms wasn't an instant success as a musician. At the first performance of a concerto on which he'd worked for four years, only three people clapped. Everyone else hissed. But eventually, his music became popular, and he was one of the few composers ever who didn't have to take another job to make a living. He was one musician who spent less money than he earned. With his extra money, Brahm took care of relatives in Hamburg and any friend who needed help. His own tastes were simple in everything but music and food. He owned an expensive collection of original music manuscripts by Mozart and other composers he admired. And Brahms loved food. The main melody of his third symphony came to him, he reported, after a meal of fresh asparagus and champagne. When a doctor told him he had to go on a diet, he protested that he was dining with composer Johann Strauss, one of his favorite dinner companions, that night, chicken with paprika. And he asked the doctor to pretend that he hadn't come to see him until the next day. Another much-loved dish was herring, and he adored eggnog. He would have three glasses of beer with dinner and always had coffee afterwards. His table manners were not the best. For breakfast, he would eat sardines and drink the oil right from the tin. Brahms lived for 26 years in the same apartment and every day ate at the Red Hedgehog restaurant. Later in his life, people said that Brahms, with his short legs and the huge bushy beard that became his trademark, began to resemble a hedgehog himself. Before I had my beard, I looked like Clara Schumann's son, he said. Now with it, I looked like her father. A bashful man, he liked his beard because it allowed me to trot about so nice and anonymous. 
He wore flannel shirts and short, baggy pants that often showed several inches of checked cotton underwear. Another way you could catch a glimpse of his underwear was to watch him conduct an orchestra. He sometimes forgot to fasten his suspenders when he conducted. He'd have to grab his pants before they fell down. He smoked cigars constantly and usually wore a shabby brown coat with cigar ash smudges all over it. He walked the way Beethoven did, with his hands behind his back. Brahms got up every morning at four or five, made his own coffee with his Viennese coffee maker, and went for a walk in the woods to hear the birds singing. He kept his pockets filled with candy and little pictures, which he handed to neighborhood children on his walks. Then he would go to work. Brahms worked painstakingly. His first symphony took him about 10 years to write. He prepared meticulous manuscripts, and if he wasn't completely satisfied with them, he would burn them or throw the pages into the river. It does not just come to you, Brahms would say of composing. It is torture. He often sought advice from friends, and he made friends easily. He wasn't a phony and couldn't tell even the smallest lie. Though he wasn't deceptive, he did work hard to charm. After an evening that Brahms spent drinking with Tchaikovsky, who hated him, Tchaikovsky grudgingly admitted that Brahms at least had a nice sense of humor. Brahms could be sarcastic and domineering, too, and very tactless. Once he was said to have excused himself from a dinner party by saying, I beg a thousand pardons if there should be anyone here whom I have not insulted tonight. The one friend he never alienated was Schumann. Decorations mean nothing to me. I only want to have them. Brahms did have an ego. When he was passed over for a conducting job in Hamburg, he was bitter about it to the end of his life. He even blamed it for the, his failure to get married. I would have become an orderly citizen, he mourned. But Brahms never did marry. Perhaps he liked his freedom? Perhaps other women paled next to Schumann. Perhaps he had a fear of the unknown. I cannot make up my mind to either a first opera or a first marriage, he liked to joke. Brahms lived less than a year after Clara Schumann died. At age 64, he died of cancer of the liver. All the ships in Hamburg lowered their mast, their flags to half-mast that day. Musical Notes Brahms always slept like a baby. After all, he wrote Brahms' lullaby, also known as Lullaby and Goodnight, possibly the most famous lullaby ever, but no one could sleep in the same room with him. He was a notoriously loud snorer. Brahms is the third of the three B's, Bach, Beethoven, and Brahms. It was conductor Hans van Bülow who probably invented the term. He called Brahms' first symphony Beethoven's tenth, meaning that Brahms' music was the logical next step after Beethoven's. The famous horn solo in this symphony was jotted down on a picture postcard Brahms sent to Clara Schumann from his summer home in the Tyrol. A survey of 100 musicians taken in California in 1989 ranked Brahms as the number one favorite composer.